Every year here in Montana, we start our archery season off by preparing for elk season. Archery season might as well be elk season in my book. There's something about getting ready for the fall every year. It gives us archers a chance to test any of the new equipment we might have got throughout the summer months and put it to good use. Um, we're doing everything from spin tests on our broadheads, checking the penetration uh, with new arrow shafts, the, um, everything down to the veins and sights, rests, everything, you name it. Us archers are obsessed with tuning our gear to get it just right, and typically, elk is first on the menu. Every season it seems like, whether you hunt white-tailed deer or elk, you start off by thinking, how can I kill a bigger bull or a bigger buck than I did the year before? 
In Montana, one of the ways I feel to achieve this is to push back in further than most people are able to do. Having a friend like Barrett who has horses and all the tack to make that possible, we take advantage of it. And every year, opening day, we pick a different area to try to get miles back in and hunt those places that most people never see. This time of year, the elk are focused on water. The rut hasn't fully kicked in yet. They're not just rut crazed out of their minds. They're thinking food, shade, water. So my plan was to just stick to the wallows, hunt those north facing slopes, deep, dark timber. And if they weren't gonna talk, I was gonna have to go in after them. Elk hunting gets in your blood, um, different from anything else. The, I don't know if it's the sound of the bugle or the look of a bull when he's got his head tipped back coming in with snot dripping out his nose and, you know, he's there to fight. And that's intimidating. Sometimes I've found myself wondering, why did I want this animal this mad, this close? But that's rare. It's, I've hunted since I was 12 years old to get those opportunities and I can count on one hand the amount of times that's happened. Elk hunting's tough, but that's what brings me back day after day after day.
September 18th now. Dave and I came out this morning and uh, beautiful, beautiful bluebird skies this morning. Birds singing. We got clear back in here. And uh, actually got into some elk, stuck a bull, and we are headed out to uh, get some more supplies and come back in and get him. But, uh, unbelievable day. They say if you don't like the weather in Montana, wait five minutes. Now you see what we're talking about here. I mean, it is just pounding. I don't know why I chose to stop in this meadow to film this, but... Well, guys, it's now about noon. The next day after I hit that bowl and I think part of the reason that we can't find him here is these tracks we were following are now running and uh, it's kind of hard to tell in this dirt but it looks like he's being pursued by something. We're trying to follow this trail, it's the only thing we got. You can see this stuff is just soaked from the rain um, and it's like a jungle in here so, but you can kind of see down this portion here where this bull came down through. and. You know, when you don't have much to go on, you have to go on what you do have. And right now, all we have is a running elk here. And there are wolves in here and bears, like I said, and I'm just afraid that something might have kicked him up and that's why we can't find him. <clears throat> it's discouraging, but I do feel like we're on him here. So we're just gonna keep moving here.
we're just coming down the trail here and I can smell something. Caught a whiff of something right up here, smelled like elk, really strong. Wind's coming right up here. We've been hearing ravens and magpies from around here and now I'm smelling it. I have a feeling my bull is right down here. We basically haven't left this area trying to find this elk. Just heard something. We do got to be careful because there was wolf tracks on the trail with this elk. And this is also big black bear area. I just saw a bird fly down in the trees right here. Let's move up and look just right over this ridge. When Jason contacted us regarding his hunt, um, he had advised us that he'd taken an elk and then was unable to find it for a couple of days. And, and when he did find it, he did the right thing. He uh, contacted us and advised us of what had taken place up to the point where he found the elk. The animal can be lost uh, to other predators. It may be partially consumed, mostly consumed. It may have gone sour because it sat out for so many days. Um, there's a number of different things that can happen. Uh, state law requires that if a person kills an animal, they need to tag it immediately, uh, whether you find it in 10 minutes or three days later. If you hunt long enough, uh, there's a chance something's going to happen. And if uh, through no fault of your own, you might actually lose an animal and uh, not recover it for a couple of days. And, and ethically, you know, you really have to put in that effort. It's, it's, it's ethically your responsibility to uh, do that animal justice and, and put whatever time and effort it takes to find that animal. Uh, so when you do find it, it may or may not uh, be in a condition that you can use the meat. It's just such a mix of emotions. I mean, you want to smile, but it's back and forth. It really is. It's just a beautiful day here in Montana, and uh, I've said it before, but the whirlwind of emotions that you go through as a hunter when this bull came in, I, I've just played it over and over and over in my mind. I was at full draw and held it and held it and held it till he swung around and made the shot I wanted to make. I feel like I did everything I could as a hunter to make the most responsible ethical shot. And you dread this as a hunter, but it's bound and determined to happen if you bow hunt or rifle hunt. It's. Uh, it's unfortunate, but we owe it to that animal to stay on him, do what we can to find him, and when we do, put our tag on him and call it good for the year. So we're just gonna take the time to admire this animal and just see if we can figure out what happened here, whether it was bears or wolves or both, and then get the heck out of here, because if there are both in here, it's thick, and you will not see them coming. That's why I'm just talking and rambling is part of my defense mechanism in here too. But um, once again, 2013 Montana archery elk. I just can't say enough.
powered by Campbell Cameras.